Hey everybody, my name is Izal and welcome to what is a slightly different video for me. We are going to rebuild this computer which I purchased second hand for £135, around $150. Specs wise we have an AMD FX6350 with 6 cores running at 3.8GHz. Graphics card is a AMD Radeon R9 280X. RAM is 2 4 gig sticks of DDR3 and at the moment it has a 1TB old school spinning disk hard drive which I do plan to put a 240 gig SSD in there and a PCI Wi-Fi card rather than a little USB plug you can see poking out there at the top. So first you'll notice is there's a nice solid side panel on this side and if we just turn it around you'll notice some vents letting nice cool air into the back of the case just keeping the back of the motherboard nice and cool not ideal so that'll be a quick win hopefully it's bring it down a few degrees so let's take these side panels off and see what's inside as you can see here we have an evo 212 cooler which is very capable we also have an exhaust fan at the back which isn't exhausting at the moment that is sucking air in at the side of the Evo. The fan attached to the Evo 2 onto heat sink is also on the wrong way so instead of pushing air through it's pulling air down from the top and pushing it against the back plate of the graphics card. That coupled with one fan at the front sucking cold air in and the PSU facing downwards so that isn't even acts as exhaust means we've got a whole lot confused air. The plan is to rotate the Evo 2 onto 90 degrees and spin both fans around so one is pushing air through the Evo and the other is sucking that air out the back of the case. Here comes two hours of rebuilding cut down to six minutes and accompanied by some nice royalty free music. Skip forward to the eight minute mark for the final product and benchmarking results.
So there we have it. As you can see from these before and after shots, the PC is not only dust free but should also have improved temperatures due to improved airflow. However, the benchmarks tell a rather uninspiring story. So here we have a 3D Mark Skydiver, ran before the rebuild, scored 17,671. Afterwards, it gained 12 points, having a total of 17,683. Fire Strike, we managed to gain a huge 9 points, 7,126 up to 7,135. And Times Pi managed to go from 2,414 all the way up to 2,430, giving us 16 points gained. However, when it came to game testing, we saw the same nominal gains. The thermals were noticeably better, so there would be more overclocking headroom. First up is play on own battlegrounds for a medium settings at 1080p, which achieved a solid average of 72 FPS with 1% low of 51. You can see the GPU is maxed out at 99% utilization, but with a nice temperature of 79 degrees, and the CPU chilling out at just 47% utilization, with a temperature of a nice frosty 45 degrees. Next up is Mordhau, the most demanding game tested. Again, set at medium settings 1080p, we managed a very playable average of 55 frames per second with 1% low of 28. Hardware-wise, it's the same story with the GPU pegged close to 100% and the CPU much lower at just 68%. On Fortnite, we managed an average of 78 frames per second with 1% low of 56. And in CSGO, we managed an average of 151 frames a second with a 1% low of 49. And finally, Apex Legends managed an average of 92 frames a second and a 1% low of 53. To wrap up, I think if I were to overclock, we would be able to push this hardware much further post-rebuild. I did expect a slight performance increase with base clocks, as in theory compared to what the Thermi throttle later. So there we have it, the results are in and rather lacklustre, but it looks much cleaner and the airflow is undoubtedly better, leaving it ripe for a bit of overclocking. And as you can see from the graph on screen, the GPU is most definitely the bottleneck, which I was surprised. I thought they were quite nicely balanced. Well, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you and good night.